the 2022 Chevy Silverado ZR2. In this video, we're gonna talk about what this thing offers, what they missed, what you need to know, and most importantly, things that I don't like about it. So, let's roll. Now, if you're comparing this to the Raptor, well, this thing misses a few things in comparison to the Raptor. Of course, it does cost less than the Raptor. First of all, it does not have the same presence as the Raptor. If you look at it carefully, it does have some aggressive things on the front end, but on the side profile, this just looks like a normal off-road vehicle. Meanwhile, the Raptor is that bulky with massive side fenders extended. The front end is very aggressive. The rear end as well, in the Raptor, you have the quad exhaust, single exhaust on each side. This is a bit different than that so you don't get the same design that you find in the Raptor but it does have some cool things next thing I want to talk about is the engine what this offers in comparison to the Raptor and the T-Rex under the hood this uses a 6.2 liter V8 that makes 420 brake horsepower unlike the Raptor which uses a 3.5 liter V6 twin turbo and makes 450 brake horsepower yes it does have more performance than this so technically that's where the raptor wins a bit more in terms of the pound feet of torque this makes up to 460 pound feet of torque and it is of course a 10 speed automatic transmission but the raptor makes up to 510 pound feet of torque which of course is more powerful than this now in terms of the fuel efficiency that's where things get pretty interesting you see the raptor although it makes more horsepower in my experience experience driving both of them for a full week this engine it is an absolute guzzler in fact I'm getting about 16 liters per 100 kilometers it's not very fuel efficient but it does tow more than the Raptor and most importantly it does have more payload than the Raptor. If you are an absolute fan of off-roading, well, you wanna hear this. First of all, the ZR2 only runs on 33-inch tires. The Raptor can go up to 37-inch tires, which means it gives you better approach angle, breakover, and departure as well because of that tire setup, which means that the vehicle is also higher off the ground. This runs on 18-inch wheels, 33-inch. Of course, these are the uh, Territory MT Goodyear Wrangler tires. They're still pretty good for off-roading, but not at the same level as a Raptor. Initially, when I picked up the truck, well, it was pretty exciting because of this. That does sound pretty good. And I have to say it actually sounds better than the Raptor. But here's the thing though, with time, this gets pretty annoying. And especially when you live in an apartment building, when you start this thing at cold start, it's even worse. What that also means is that when you're driving it, it's not really that comfortable because the exhaust sound is always there. In the Raptor, it does have exhaust valves. So when you change the driving mode, it actually changes the sound as well. This on the other hand though, just a bit uncomfortable in terms of the sound that comes out of the back. In terms of the suspension setup, the Raptor uses a more aggressive suspension system for more off-road, of course, and it does have different driving modes from Baja style to off-road. In comparison to this, which is a bit more subtle, yet still with some mild off-roading, this thing would do pretty well. And the Raptor does have a more aggressive rear axle in comparison to this. One thing they missed in the second row in comparison to the Raptor is the space underneath the seat. Although you can fold these three at the same time, it's actually two plus one, they have missed this area completely, in my opinion. In the Raptor, you get an extension where you can put your tools and everything is hidden in. In here, it does have a bit more space underneath. Problem is that you can't cover anything. So the only thing you can do is basically fold the seat down. But then what I do like about this that needs to be said as well in comparison to the Raptor, if this thing closes, is the fact that it does have some pockets over here. It offers space in between the seat. So it's pretty interesting. It's the first time I've seen that. So maybe you can hide the, your gun if you live in the US. Although the interior is new for this year, of course, it had received a major update on the interior, like the infotainment display. We have this massive screen in here and then the cluster as well. I do think it still feels a little bit outdated. What I mean with that? Well, the buttons look very familiar to me. First, they look like they were taken straight from a caddy and then move on to the center. We have the actual shift knob, which in my opinion, it's this weird looking Cadillac style shift knob that is not as friendly as the one in the Raptor, which is just a standard. You keep moving left and right. It also doesn't have enough space around here the same as the Raptor they could have made something more innovative like the Ford F-150 you can fold it and use it kind of like a desk style this though it's missing that to me it just feels that 
they made this in a way that it was just good enough not really great you do have latest tech features from heated seats ventilated seats android auto apple carplay it actually has an actual android infotainment display which it kind of confuses me a bit because every time i connect my apple carplay i have two google maps at the same time i know it's pretty weird but you can adjust that then we have like latest 360 camera it does have of course a backup camera for the trail assist which does help when you're attaching everything and then the wireless charging pad is located right here you can slide your phone and thankfully my 13 pro max does fit in there which is very important but other than that, to me, feels like a lot of things were taken from a Cadillac or a Chevy Tahoe and just bumped into this thing here. It could have been a little bit better in comparison to a Raptor, which I do like quite a lot. The good news is that for 2022, this received major updates. So let's talk about the exterior first. Start with the front end. We got this beautiful headlights, very aggressive look. And then we move on to the bottom where we have the fog lights. And then over here, kind of like a Raptor style, though these are just white extended LED lights. The grill is massive. You can actually fit my hand right through. And then the logo, my favorite part, you have this red stripe inside it. Then we jump into the hood over here, which has this blacked out hood scoop, which it's not functional. And then it says 6.2 liter, which shows the actual engine size. That's a 6.2 liter V8. Then then we move on to the bottom over here. Yeah, that's full metal. And then we have the skid plate, of course, two recovery hooks, one on each side. And I did find something interesting. I believe this must be the engine block heater. So you can plug in here into your house. So that way it keeps the engine nice and heated, which again is very, very important. Then we jump into the side over here. Look at this massive space between the tire and the actual fender. These are the 18 inch wheels and the biggest size you can get for these tires are only 33 inch. Then we have the beautiful ZR2 logo over here to tell you that this is a ZR2. Now my favorite thing, of course, the actual mirrors because through this key fob over here, you look at this beauty, you lock it and guess what? They fold. Yes, this massive gigantic mirrors, which I don't think I've seen in other trucks. Then we'll move on to the bottom. We have the protective here. This should be like a running board, but they're technically to protect the vehicle when you go off road. But you can, of course, use it as a running board. Then we jump into the back. Again, similar tire setup in here, too. You can actually see the actual suspension system in yellow. Look at that over there. Beautiful. To the side, at the top over here, it says Chevrolet so that you know it's a Chevy. The back side, again, a bit more aggressive. Silverado on this side, ZR2 on that side over there. The blacked out Chevy logo. We have two buttons over here, one for the tailgate and one for the half tailgate. So this is like a split option. You press that and then you press this button over here. Look at that. Now this, you can do it as a table, right? You put your beer over here, you're taking a break or your lunch or your drink, whatever, doesn't matter. But if you do this completely, it opens automatically and guess what? Let's just say you have those massive logs that you're worried they're gonna fly out through and become a scary movie style. Well, don't worry because you can do that. If that's not enough, well, do this and guess what? This part over here, you have a button underneath and it turns into an actual step. Look at this. You can extend this completely and bang on. And then we jump inside the actual bed. First of all, there is a logo over here that says ZR2. So the people in the back over there, they know that this is a ZR2 in case if the actual tailgate is down. Then we have an actual window over here, which you can open automatically. We got the lights at the top. Then we have two cameras. One is pointed towards the bed and one is pointed at the back. Now you're probably wondering, what is this? Well, they put this here on purpose because it is actually like a support stick or a cane style. So if you're trying to get into the bed, well, you can use that. And most importantly, it does have a clip at the top over here. You press that, you lock it, and it's back to normal. And then we have the bed lights. We got the hooks on this side. Then we'll move on to the right side, which this has an actual plug for 120 volts. There's only one. I do believe in the Raptor you get two of them for the onboard package. Then we have the light, then more hooks onto the side. Then we jump into the driver's side and let's start with the door panel over here. Control unit for the windows, soft leather, yellow stitching, Bose audio system. Look at this massive speaker over here. And then we get to the top 
we have two memory seat uh, settings for the seats and then this carbon fiber looking panel which is not carbon fiber but you have the soft leather then it greets you with this ZR2 logo right at the bottom then we have the rubber mats if you want to go off-road so that you can remove them and clean it then move on to this area over here where things get quite interesting I'm not going to point at something that is very awkward but I will talk about the features first we have the different driving modes the trail assist park button over there this is for the headlights the bed light on this side over here and then you can adjust the brightness and it does have a heads-up display but these buttons look very similar to a Cadillac in my opinion but what pisses me off about this is the quality of this truck if you look carefully this is crooked it's actually inside more on this side than it is on this side over here in comparison to this which is flat all the way through clearly they made some mistake here when they installed it oh there you go maybe i did that onto the steering wheel for the driver of course we have the standard buttons for the cruise control on the left side for the radio and you also have more buttons behind the steering wheel but one thing i noticed with this is it doesn't have any zr2 logo in the actual steering wheel that would have been a nice touch then we'll move on to the cluster which of course it is fully digital you can customize the actual uh cluster to whatever you want it to be it has quite a lot of options you can show your apple carplay and you can also change the actual layout the display layout you want to do classic you want to do progressive it changes completely and then we go into digital like there's a few modes that you can play around whatever you like and clean i always keep it in classic because it just shows me just enough information for me so i'm not over bombarded with too much information so we got your speedometer on one side the tachometer on the other side it shows you in two-wheel drive you can change this in two-wheel drive four-wheel high four-wheel low as well then it does have some driving modes we have off-road normal and uh, different terrain that's it like it doesn't offer as much as let's say uh, a ford raptor which you have like baja style off-road uh, rock and crawl this does have crawl option in case you get stuck somewhere then the screen which again massive infotainment display now this is technically kind of like a android built-in option yes you can see the google play store google assistant alexa as well and most importantly you have like google news you got different options for your climate so it is kind of like those um, android screens that you can purchase it after market and it does have android auto and apple carplay you can connect your phone wirelessly and by usb-c or usb and we have the trail assist and look at that you have different option it actually shows you the weight as well it has a 360 camera which can be adjusted differently like it has different modes you can do the bed you can do the rear size you can do size profile if you want to go off-road and of course this is for the trailer to help you to connect the trailer to the truck like there's so many options that you can play around like it has even 360 mode as you can see like a bird's eye view style it also has a rear view mirror camera which you display through the rear view mirror and you can see right now oh my phone fell off it's okay, it didn't break. Now that's loud. That's actually pretty loud for a truck. For a truck that only makes 420 horsepower. Yeah, you could say the T-Rex or TRX as you want to call it is loud for sure. But this though, it's pretty loud. It, it feels like it's a straight pipe uh, exhaust in some ways. It's not fully, but it feels like that. And that's where this might win for you. For me though, day to day, I, I don't think I need that. There's no need for it because it only, it doesn't even feel that fast. Like it's fast, you put your foot down, it's fast enough, but it's not as fast as you, for example, the TRX or the Raptor in my opinion, which makes like 450 horsepower. There is a great thing about this though. And if you've never driven one, once you drive one, you'll notice that. This is very comfortable. It's because of that Multimatic suspension system in this truck. It's very very comfortable for a truck. The Raptor feels just a bit stiff This on the other hand feels comfortable inside. It's a smooth ride. It's soft 
I could do a long trip with this, except that freaking exhaust in the back. For some people, that might be a bit annoying. For some, they enjoy that. I didn't mind it the first couple of days, and after that, it just, it's got a bit too much. And I, every time I started the car, the truck uh, underground, I was looking around to make sure there wasn't anyone around looking at me turning this thing on because it sounded pretty ridiculous. It's kind of, it's just a bit uncomfortable for my take. A pickup truck sounding like that underground, it's actually pretty loud. In terms of tech features for your road, you can get, I believe, super cruise with this. This doesn't have it, it has the standard line assist, gap assist, proper level two semi-autonomous driving, but not fully, as you'd expect in the super cruise, which drives itself in major highways. Only major highways, that's where Super Cruise works. I've used it before with an Escalade and it's actually very, very good. But I do believe the new Raptor, the 2023 model, you may be able to get the Blue Cruise, the one, the Ford version, technically. That's not bad. You get used to it, I think. I haven't gotten used to it yet, though. I like how this thing drives. I like the space inside. It's comfortable, it's spacious. You don't hear the road noise as much. This is one thing with this truck. In terms of the latest tech features, this has pretty much everything you'd find in every new vehicle. Uh, from like blind spot assist, automatic headlights, of course. This thing though in the center, this infotainment display here annoys me a little bit sometimes because when I connect my phone, I'm trying to figure out which one is my Google Maps. The one on my phone or the one in the truck. But in some ways it does get rid of that necessity to connect your phone to it just for Google Maps. You can just connect through Bluetooth that means you'll be able to answer phone calls or anything like that. In terms of the interior, I do think they could have been more innovative. What I mean with that, Ford at least brought out some interesting cool things about the, the F-150, the Raptor. Like for example, the shift knob that flips flat, that way you have access to the entire armrest and turns into a, like, a personal desktop kind of thing. I like that and it's like your personal little desk if you, if you're working, you put your lunch in one side, you put your laptop on the other side, or uh, if you're sharing it with your coworker, something like that. This though, it, it needs to be more of that, more innovative in my opinion. Like the interior to me seems like a lot of things were taken from uh, Cadillac, like a lot of buttons, like massive screens. It's nice, the 360 camera is nice, but it could have been a bit different. The interior could have been a bit more, uh, I'd say with extra features. Like that's the way I see it. The exterior though, it's not as bulky and gone to the gym kind of like the Raptor. It's a bit more settled, but in my opinion, it just does the job well. And I don't think it's competing with the Raptor because let's talk about the price. Like this, you're looking about 85,000 in Canada or so. The Raptor goes over $95,000. That's a lot of money in terms of the difference. So I think maybe Chevy will bring out a Raptor competitor, but this is not. This is an almost Raptor it's not yet at that level. It's not even close to the TRX. The, the current Raptor is not even close to the TRX. Nothing is actually close to the TRX in my opinion at this point. It's an unbelievable truck. This is more subtle, it's more conservative, uh, yet with some off-road experience, yet with that tech features that you need in your day-to-day uh, -day truck with some power. It's an absolute guzzler that I'll tell you right now, this thing drinks more, in my opinion, than the Raptor, but less than the TRX, which is, another level. I think in the TRX, when I had it for a week, I was getting about 28 liters per 100 kilometers, which is absolutely ridiculous. This is not at that level, but it's not good. That's the thing. I do believe the engine on a highway does have cylinder deactivation. That means you get better. GM in general applies that to most of its vehicles, like the Cadillacs, for example, anything in the Chevy, the GMC, they have that kind of technology just so that you get a better fuel efficiency for a long trip. But I think it's still for like, if you're living in the city, this thing, it's a guzzler. But I will add something that I was a bit scared when I first picked it up. I live in an apartment building, which means it's not as high for some vehicles. The Raptor cannot fit in my building. This though, it has a few inches away from that uh, minimum distance, minimum height that is required. So it is able to fit in without any problems. It's not easy, like you don't have a huge gap, but I'm able to drive this thing in and park it inside. The Raptor, I couldn't do it. So that's another thing to keep in mind because let's just say you, you live in a big city or you live in an apartment and the, the actual parking is downstairs. That might be a problem with the Raptor if you, in case if you didn't know, unless your building has, let's just say, uh, the, the maximum height of over 
eight feet or seven and a half because I believe at my place about six eight or so or seven this fits perfectly I like the truck I like how it drives it has enough horsepower the towing is great more than the Raptor that's a big difference uh, even the payload but it's a bit pricey overall I have to say just a bit pricey because if you're going all the way to 88 and money might not be an issue I'd say the Raptor could be your choice. It would be my choice actually between that and that. I know it's expensive and probably it's impossible to get a Raptor, but I don't think you're gonna have an easy time getting one of these anyways. It's not gonna be as easy as you think. But having said that, this is not bad. This is not bad. <laughs> 